Another type of loop is called a for loop. For loops are similar in the way that they run code over and over again. However, for loops actually count numbers. Let me show you guys. If you could guess, most people would probably say that this prints every number from 1 to 10. As you can see, it prints every number from 1 to 10 in the output. That's because the script works kind of like this. This number right here is the start. We start at 1. As you can see in the output, we started at 1. This number right here is the stop. As you can see, we stopped at 10. And this number right here is the step. We counted by 1 each time. If we set the step to 2, it's going to count by 2s. As you can see, it counted every Every number by 2. And the reason we only see odd numbers here is because we're starting from an odd number. We started at 1, then we went to 3, 5, 7, and 9. We obviously can't go to 11 because that's past our stop point, so we just stopped at 9. One other thing to take note of is that the script actually continued after the for loop. That's because we finished executing this code. We made it to 10, and then we moved on with the script. Another important note to make is that we can put wait statements inside for loops. For example, I can wait 0.2 seconds between each print statement, and in the output there is a noticeable delay when it's printing these numbers. I think this right here is a great place to pause the video and take a screenshot. That's because this will help you remember start, stop, and step. There's actually another kind of for loop. Let's go ahead and take a look at how it works. In the workspace, I created a folder and I named it folder of parts. Inside this, I just created a bunch of parts and they all have the same position, size, and color. All the parts are exactly the same and they're just inside this folder. Now let's say I wanted to do something to all of these parts at once in a script. We can't just write game dot workspace dot folder of parts dot part because that is only going to affect one of the parts and that's probably just going to be the first one. That's why we use a for loop. Now it's important to remember that there are other use cases too. For example, if we want to loop through every player in the game, we would do exactly what I'm about to do, except we would do it for the player's service instead of the folder of parts. This may look complicated at first, so just bear with me here. Hopefully this clears it up a little more. What this loop does is it goes through each of these parts and it runs all this code one time for each part. To demonstrate this, let's go ahead and change the name of each part. Let's write value.name equals number. What this will do is for each part, it's going to set its name to the number that part is inside the folder. Let's also use a wait so we can symbolize this easier. Now that I ran the game, you can actually see in the script each of these parts is getting numbered hopefully that made sense and if it didn't feel free to join the discord and ask any questions you have now i want to show you guys a statement it's called break what it does is it exits a loop it's usually just used inside of an if statement because there's no other way to really say if something happens then break out of the loop so what i've done here is for each of these values for each of these parts what we're going to do is check in the workspace if there's a part called end part or any object really called end part then we're just going to break out of the loop so let's go ahead and run the game and create a part called end part and just to demonstrate it doesn't have to be a part i'm just going to use this click detector let's open up this folder Let's go ahead and name this end part. As you can see, the parts are still being named. And as soon as I write end part, it printed outside of loop. If this still doesn't make sense, let me explain it again. What this line of code says is that we go game.workspace.folder of parts right here, and then we get all the children. So all of these parts are here. Remember where children are from the beginning of this video. The number represents the number of times we've gone through the loop. So if this is our 10th time running this code, the number will be 10. The value represents the actual part we're editing. If you saw we're editing all the parts one by one, that's basically what's happening. The value changes each time the number goes up. And each time we go through this loop, what we're doing is we're checking if there's an object in the workspace called end part. And if there is, we're breaking out of the loop using this break statement. Remember, when the script finishes this loop, it goes on to continue here, and it doesn't print this until we break, as you saw previously.